Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Communion for the first Sunday of Lent. Forty days and forty nights thou wast fasting in the wild. Forty days and forty nights tempted and yet undefiled. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus teaches us that the two great commandments are to love God with heart, soul, mind and strength and to love our neighbour as ourselves. As we prepare to celebrate the Holy Mysteries, we examine ourselves and turn to God in penitence and faith. <coughs> Kyrie eleison, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Christe eleison, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Kyrie eleison, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness, and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. The Word of the Lord. So dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty, shall say to the Lord, My refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the Father and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings, and you will be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, 
lest you dash your foot against a stone. Listen to the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this morning we have a first in a series of uh, short reflections about praying. And my first one is called Overcoming Reluctance. You would think that with lockdown and nowhere to go, if not quite nothing to do, it would be the perfect opportunity for praying more regularly and frequently. That has not been my experience. I find it hard to concentrate on anything at present. I don't seem to have the mental space to think. And for those of us whose praying is normally done in a particular building and in the communal gathering for worship, this time is a real time of deprivation. One of the collects begins by describing God as being more ready to hear than we to pray. So clearly this experience of reluctance to pray or inability to pray is clearly recognised. Why am I reluctant to pray? Boredom might be a factor. Whether one uses a formal set of words such as the prayer book or whether you make it up as you go along in the more evangelical tradition perhaps, sometimes it feels like here we go again. If I read another psalm verse I shall scream. If I read another devotional passage from some old saint whose world and whose beliefs are really quite different to my own, I shall simply give up. I suppose it is like exercise, although you'll understand I don't know a lot about exercise. But if you want bulging biceps and perfect pecs, you have to keep on with the boring, repetitive routines. And the same applies presumably for spiritual exercises. There is an element of sticking at it. And it helps whether in the gym or in the chapel, if you have a clear goal, you have a desire and longing to be or become something. Perhaps I feel from time to time that prayer is a waste of time, an exercise in self-delusion, you know, talking to the brick wall. In part for me that's a reaction against the idea that if you believe hard enough you will get what you ask for and I think that's simply not true. It would be very dangerous if it was true. Whatever else prayer is it has to be a refining of our desires. And here's another reason for my reluctance. I know quite well that real praying brings me up against reality and truth and I don't always want to face that. Do you find that when you've done something wrong, something you're ashamed of perhaps, that you're quite reluctant to pray? 
sin always tries to cut us off from God, perhaps particularly at the moment when we most ought to pray. Making prayer unattractive is a sure way to keep us apart from the source of life. As I say, if we're going to pray, it helps to have some sense of a goal, something we're aiming for, contemplating the glory of God, the aim of becoming the child of God that he calls us to be. And that's why we sing all those hymns of praise, and that's why we hear all those descriptions of holiness, which so often seem far apart from our own experience. Use those things to set the goal before us, to stimulate our desire, to head us in the right direction. To give yourself to pray is an act of faith. Not in the sense that if I believe hard enough, I will get what I ask for. That's the Peter Pan idea, you know, I do believe, I do believe in fairies. But to attend to what is not seen, to trust that our thoughts and our words are heard and understood and valued by the source of everything. That is faith indeed. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, save through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So let us pause for a moment to call to mind the people for whom we wish to pray this morning. Let us pray to the Lord for courage to give up all that hinders us from giving ourselves to him. Give your church the courage to give up her preoccupation with herself and to give more time to your mission in the world. We pray for Michael, our bishop, and for our group of parishes. Give your world the courage to give up war, bitterness and hatred, and to seek peace. We pray for Michael D. Higgins, our president, for the members of our government, and for all in authority. Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife and jealousy in our families, our neighbourhoods and communities. We pray for a sense of mutual support and solidarity as we bear with the continuing lockdown together. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness and to live for others. Help us to give thought, time, care and comfort to the sick, the lonely and those in need. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in faith. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. For your holy name's sake. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. 
Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is in every way tempted as we are yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to overcome all our temptations. And so with all your people, with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as you eat and drink these holy gifts, granted by the power of the life-giving Spirit, that we may be made one in your holy church, and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Though we may not receive the sacrament physically at present, yet Jesus is faithful and comes to all who open their hearts to him in love. Draw near and receive. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us thy endurance share, and from earthly joys abstain, with thee watching on to prayer, with thee strong to suffer pain. Lord God, you renew us with the living bread from heaven. Nourish our faith, increase our hope, strengthen our love, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.